Roy's going to walk you through this, uh, what his, his magic is. Well, I don't know about the magic, but it's, but it's the way I do it. Uh, first off, I use a, an Imperial Taurus machine, which uses Facetron DOPS. And uh, the uh, transfer jig I have here is one that came from Imperial uh, Gems. That's Nick Michaelitis. And it's uh, set up to use the Facetron DOPS. First off, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to dop a, uh, a piece of rough onto the flat dop here on the, on the uh, stick. I'm going to lay the mic down for a minute. First off, I use first off I use a, I use a Lico wax, which is unfortunately no longer made, but it's a high temperature brown wax. And as you can see in the picture here, I'm holding uh, it comes in sticks like that. When you get down to that little nubbin of wax, I take a nail and, and heat it and stick it into the nubbin, and I can still handle that little piece and get the last bit out of it. First thing I do is turn on my little butane torch. And I heat the, the uh, dop that I'm going to attach the stone to hot enough to where I can get some, get some wax melted on it. That's enough. And then I take the piece of rough and I position it on that dop. Then I close the transfer jig so it's held securely. Then I move it to where I know it's in the center. Then I use a little bit more heat just enough to melt the wax onto the stone. That should be enough. And that's ready to go in your machine and be faceted. I have another stone here that I've already faceted and got the pavilion cut on it. And I put it in the top of my transfer jig like that. And I'll, in this case, it's the standard round brilliant, so I want a cone for the bottom part of it. And again, Turn on my torch, heat that bottom dop stick just enough until I can melt the wax into it. And then bring the stone down and insert it into the dop. But Roy, they say not to, to let the wax burn. What's happening here? I, I got too close to it. <laughs> Does it make any difference? I, it hasn't, that little bit hasn't made any difference here, but normally, yes, it, it shouldn't be allowed to burn because it gets very brittle. And then, after that sets for a little bit, that's still a little warm, I'm going to let it set. That has to set for a little bit until it cools off. I usually, have, I, usually have a bucket. I usually have a tub of water here that I put the whole thing in to cool it down. Then you slide the other part out. I hope that's cool enough. What I what I see. Come on. And then that drop stick is off of there and the stone is transferred. You need to go in your machine and be finished be cutting. And folks, that's it. Something that uh, that Roy, you can't see here, but it's really important, is Roy flowed the wax so that it flowed on both the, the, the stone and the dock. If you ever get a little bead of wax, that means you've got a cold joint, and usually that's on the stone side, and that's going to come off. But if you can look at his, you'll see that it's a good flow, and that means the stone got up to a good temperature, and the... Uh, well, it got to a sufficient temperature. I dop uh, opal this way, too. Okay. The only difference uh, where I differ from him is I kind of use the philosophy of the old timers, and that is you don't need any flat dops. Just buy all your dops cone. Uh, most of the time, rough is not flat unless it's synthetic. Uh, so uh, cone dop lets you uh, bury it. Uh, but I'm gonna, I do the same way he does on the uh, wax. Sometimes I will take and uh, flatten the wax and just use a, a, a drip of super glue 
uh, if the material is heat sensitive. But uh, I'm going to take and, and it, the wax he uses is really great. Uh, I should say something here at this point on Miko Wax. Daryl Lee out in California no longer makes it. He had both of his knees operated on and he went out of business. And a friend of his, I knew, a good dealer in Southern California, got me the last about 15 pounds of wax he had in his cauldron. And I shared it with our local club and with... Uh, uh, I just experienced a burn from uh, hot wax. That's another reason for liking super glue because it will, uh, you can put the super glue on the burn spot. Uh, okay, I've just, I've taken a uh, cone dop, put the wax in it. I'm gonna bring the, the wax back up to uh, soften it. And then I slip my stone down in it to make a uh, impression. And then I back the stone out, put a drop of wax of uh, super glue, and I have tested. This is uh, Loctite, and it's the ultra gel. It gives you a little more time, and uh, it takes a little longer for it to set up, but it'll set up in about five minutes. I've submerged it in water for a week or two. It will not release like the regular super glue does. But when you get through, then we just do the same thing that Roy did, and that is take the uh, other dop off. Uh, I haven't finished fasting this stone, so I'm not going to take it off, but it would be the same process. And that the advantage of the super glue, in my opinion, is that. Uh, when you get through, uh, it's real easy to get your fingernail under the super glue, and while uh, when you uh, heat the the dop stick and the wax gets soft and drops off, you can get your finger under the super glue and it will just peel off and cleans up real quick. You don't have to put it in acetone or anything. I, I want to know who is it out here does epoxy. All right, who wants to demo epoxy? How long does it take to set up? Could we do that demo during lunch? <laughs> but but tell, us the, tell us the advantage of why you use epoxy.